What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com. Today I'm comparing the two flagship mock toe boots from two of the biggest and most influential American work boot companies of all time, Red Wing and Dana. Comparing these two brands was an absolute no-brainer. They're both absolute institutions in the world of American footwear. Red Wing might be more popular with the fashion-focused crowd. It was founded in 1905 by Charles Beckman. When they started out, they made like knee-high boots for like oil miners, iron workers, stuff like that. And they still make really hardy work boots like that. But they also have the Red Wing Heritage line, which is sort of more designed around preserving the old-fashioned boots before we got really modern fabrics and those sorts of things. So that's where the mock toes come in. Obviously, you know, elephant in the room, they're much, much older and uglier than these Dana boots, which I got a couple months ago. These Red Wings, they are about four years old. I've really almost worn through the sole. I've really worn the hell out of these boots, so I have a lot to say about both of them. Dana is a little bit younger, founded in 1932 in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, the same place where Chippewa Boots was founded. They moved to Oregon, and they became really well known for their hiking boots. But they've also got some interesting entries into the more sort of similar to Red Wing, like heritage work boot sort of fair. But this, I think, is definitely more of a work boot boot, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. Aesthetically speaking, obviously they've got a ton in common. They've both got this really blocky, tough guy mock toe silhouette. They've both got the nice white wedge sole. Of course, the Red Wing isn't quite as white anymore. And they've also both got kind of similar stitching. I would point out that the Red Wing is triple stitched along the vamp, whereas the Dana is double stitched and the stitching connects to the counter. It doesn't on the Red Wing. Most people aren't really going to care about that, to be honest. A lot of the real differences are going on in the sole and the construction. And when you're looking at it just from the outside, I think probably the most striking difference and one that a lot of people are still going to miss is that the Dana has a stitch down whereas the Red Wing has a Goodyear welt. And what that means is that it has some implications for resole ability. But on the Dana, you get a bit of a shelf coming out between the upper and the sole. Whereas the Red Wing is a lot more tighter along the body of the shoe. So those are honestly the main aesthetic differences I want to talk about. But although they both have oil tanned leather, I think there's some pretty important differences here as well. So let's talk about this leather. Both of them are made from full grain oil tanned leather, but these boots, they're made from two millimeter thick charcoal rough and tough leather. Red Wing actually has their own tannery. It's SB Foot Tanning Co. that makes their leather. And the rough and tough is a kind of pull-up leather. So it's extra moist. It's been saturated with more oils and waxes and other leathers from Red Wing. And there's an argument to be made that this makes it more durable and easy to take care of. It really doesn't need much treatment. You don't need to think that much about how often you need to condition the rough and tough leather. The down, on the other hand, also oil tanned, a bit thinner at 1.5 millimeters thick. And whilst also full grain and oil tanned, I actually don't know where it comes from because Dana tells me that, quote, we have too big a demand for it to be coming from one spot. So some of it's American, some of it's from overseas. I will say it feels quite different. It's not quite as moist as the pull-up from Red Wing. It's got an almost velvety feel to it, actually. It's softer than the rough and tough, which feels, well, rougher and tougher, especially because it's thicker. But this does feel like a kind of a luxurious sort of experience as far as oil tan leather goes. You can sort of change the color when you rub it with your finger and it seems a little bit more dressed up than the rough and tough leather, if that's a priority for you. Now you might look at these soles and think they're pretty much identical and they are both indeed nice soft wedge soles. There are a couple things to point out though. The Dana has more sole and it's not just because I've run through a lot of the sole on the Red Wing. The Red Wing is about an inch from a floor to the insole and whereas the Dana is about one and a quarter inches. And also the Dana sole has quite a bit more give than the Red Wing sole. Both very soft. But the Dana is definitely more of a spongy feeling walking around in it. There's a lot of other differences going on beyond the outsole. In the Red Wing, you've got a cork midsole and a leather insole, and there's no shank. The Dana, on the other hand, doesn't have these classic cork midsole leather insole thing you see in a lot of heritage boots. Instead, it's got a very thin rubber cushion midsole, and the footbed is ortholite, which is a removable inset. It's made from a sort of open-celled polyurethane, which is a bit better at heat dissipation and air circulation. Dana also happily advertises their bull run as having a sole that is safe for certain electrical hazards and is OSHA approved. And that isn't the kind of messaging you get on Red Wing's mock toe or any of their heritage boots, which are a bit more fashion focused. Lastly, I wanna point out, 
that the bull run motto here has a stitch down again, whereas the red wing has the Goodyear welt. So what that means again is that the red wing is a lot easier to resole. People can resole the Dana boot. Uh, Dana will resole it for you if you want, but it costs like 130 bucks. You are less guaranteed that uh, any random cobbler is going to be able to resole it than you are with the Goodyear welt on the red wing boot. But what does all this mean for the comfort? As far as sizing goes, uh, they both come in medium and wider widths. The Dana I got true to size, whereas the Red Wing I got like half a size down, which is really, really common in these sorts of boots. But as far as the actual comfort goes, it really kind of depends on what you're looking for. The Dana is definitely a lot squishier, not crazy, crazy squishier, but it is more squishy than the Red Wing sole, which is a bit more of a harder sort of clump around feeling that a lot of people like. This is a bit closer to the feeling you get in a sneaker than the Red Wing is. Even though, of course, they both have these wedge soles, there's not a massive difference, but that is definitely one that I noticed. And as well, I wanted to point out, the Red Wing does have that cork midsole and the leather insole. So what that means is that over time, it's going to do a better job of molding to the shape of your individual foot. And after having these for four years, it really does feel like just getting into a shoe that was made for my own foot now. That's not really as likely to happen with all the polyurethane and everything going on in the Dana sole, but softer, better shock absorption. So a lot of people are gonna prefer that. Break-in wise, the Red Wing, I had an absolutely nightmarish time. The leather is thicker. And uh, when I was walking around in it, it took, uh it took at least a week to not get actual blisters on my feet. It wasn't fun at all. The Dana, I did not have that problem besides some blisters around the cuff up here. However, I wanna point out that it appears that I am in a minority there because when you read online, everyone complains about the break-in with Dana. So I think it would not be fair for me to say that you should not expect a break-in with Dana. They're both gonna take a bit of time to tame to the shape of your own foot. So obviously one of the main questions people have when comparing two boots is which one's cheaper. This one's pretty easy to figure out. Both of these boots are very popular so you can get them in a lot of places, which means it's not crazy hard to find them on sale. But generally speaking, the Red Wing is gonna be between 240 and 280 bucks, whereas the Dana boot is gonna be between 180 and $200. So Dana is definitely cheaper. It's closer to the Thorogood in price. And so if your main priority is your wallet, that makes the choice pretty easy. All right, let's wrap this up. Which is the better boot? Okay, I'm gonna run you through some pros and cons of each of them so you can make up your own mind. The Red Wing, the pros, the leather is thicker. Some people are gonna see that as a con as far as comfort goes, but it does just feel a bit more durable. The leather is thicker, the leather is also a bit more moist. I think it can hold up to damage a little bit more than the Dana, in my opinion. I also want to point out the welt is more close to the side of the boot, if that's important to you. A lot of you guys find that more aesthetically pleasing. And it's a Goodyear welt, so it's a lot easier to resole as well. Generally, it also contours the foot a little bit better because as I mentioned, this has the cork and leather in the sole, whereas the Dana doesn't. So it does contour a little bit better to the shape of the foot. It's also just generally not quite as wide a fit. The downsides with the Red Wing, it may not be as useful for work environments. Uh, like they don't say the sole can resist electrical hazards and things like that. The shock absorption is not quite as good either. And there's no shank, which a lot of people consider to be the most important part of a shoe as far as arch support and stability goes. Honestly, I think maybe because it's a bit more of a narrow fit, I didn't find this to be any less stable than the Dana. But as far as durability in the sole goes, a lot of people really value that shank. The Dana, meanwhile, it is cheaper, it's more work boot friendly, and the sole is squishier. A lot of people, it's kind of hard to say if that's a pro or a con. I quite like squishy soles myself. Other people feel like it makes a boot feel a lot less stable, which is a very valid complaint. The downsides of the Dana, mainly, the leather is a bit thinner. It doesn't feel quite as rough and tough as the rough and tough leather on the Red Wing. And then the other downsides are the sole, honestly. Uh, again, a bit squishier. I don't know if that's a big deal to you, but the stitch down, the way that it forms like a shelf around the outside of the shoe, a lot of people don't find that as aesthetically pleasing. And of course, it also makes it harder to resole. So very similar, but very different shoes. It really depends on your own priorities. So that's my comparison of the Mock Toes from Dana and Red Wing, both truly fantastic shoes. I gotta say, I prefer the stability and the way the Red Wing contours my foot. But of course, it's almost a $100 price difference, so I can definitely see that as being the main thing that makes you move over to Dana instead. If you wanna see the full written comparison, it's in the description below. And also make sure you subscribe. I got a whole lot more bit reviews and comparisons coming up.